if your women, if your children feel the full wrath of your anger, how do you think that will impact them? A lot of people can find themselves in this healing journey, never really healing anything. If our relationship isn't solid, the whole world can come crumbling on down. Lino Holler. Lino Holler. Lino Holler has bought a wellness empire, bringing men together from all around Australia. Lino Holler is one of Australia's leading coaches. He went from being beaten and abused as a child to now helping thousands of men release their trauma, deal with their emotions, and let go of the past. His company, Men's Medicine, creates a safe space for the men of Australia and New Zealand to express themselves and to let go and level up. Rosie and I, my wife, we were fortunate enough to attend one of his couple's workshops, and we laughed, we cried, we released a lot of shit. So in today's podcast episode, we break down Leno's past, his story, his advice on how to balance your health, wealth, and relationships, as well as covering the topics of marriage and sex. I hope you enjoy this week's episode of the Empowered Man Podcast with Lena Holler from Men's Medicine. Welcome to this episode of the Empowered Man Podcast. We have a very special guest today, Lena Holler, the man. leader of Men's Medicine. Uh, I know this guy as a soul-driven brother, a man who helps men release their trauma, a man who leads in his communities, a man who's been featured all around Australia and built a fucking epic brand just helping people. Like that is impact. It's not business, it's impact. So I'd love for you to do a quick introduction of who you are and why you're here, and then we'll go into some epic questions for the listeners. Oh, thanks for introducing me, brother. I, I always share two things first. Mm. Proud father, loving husband. Big family man, I'm the third oldest of 12 kids. And it's those family values that I introduce and I share with those that come to seek guidance and support from us, our community, and it's... For us, it's about bringing people back home to themselves, not only themselves, but also their families as well. Fuck yeah, amazing. So tell us a little bit about what men's medicine does and how it can apply to the guys listening. Typically, business owners, husbands, fathers, or career-driven men, stressed out, no time, triggered, relationships breaking down, not mm. present with their kids. They're listening to this podcast because they wanna become high performance, not just in business, but also in their personal lives. Mm -hmm. So I'd love for you to share a bit about men's medicine, this movement that's going to become global uh -huh. and how the principles apply to that, that group of men. Men's medicine is, we do work with women. We, we, we started working with men and we predominantly work with men. The way I kind of look at it is, is that we provide spaces for people to step in no matter what level that they are on their journey mm -hmm. to help heal and grow wherever they're at. Mm -hmm. Right. So we provide community events. We have programs, workshops, retreats. Uh, we have trainings now as well. So whether you're someone who's at the very, very beginning of your journey mm -hmm. or you're wanting some some healing, you've got some deep stuff that you need to work through or you're on the personal development, you're looking to grow or you're looking to teach and share what we do to your own community. We provide spaces for people, no matter where they are in their journey, mm. to help support themselves and also support others as well. Huge. So let's talk about support then, because there yeah. is an epidemic right now with men and women, the whole world. Things are getting more expensive, politics, mm. drama, COVID a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And it seems like men are more stressed, depressed, anxious, overweight, divorced than ever before. Mm -hmm. Why do you think or feel like so many men are struggling, especially the guys who are successful, but they're burning to the ground behind the scenes? What's causing that in your eyes? The family unit. Yeah. I, I strongly believe is the family unit and the role of the father. Yeah. There's very rarely been anyone that I've worked with, whether it's a man or a woman, where what they're going through hasn't had something connected to their relationship with their father. Mm. Whether it's a man and his relationship with his father and his father being able to role, be a role model to help guide and show him how to be a man mm. or a woman and her relationship with her father for what to look for in a man and a partner as well. Mm. And that the majority of the people that I'm working with are overcoming the challenges of their childhood with what their experiences were with their parents, specifically their father and the relationship between their father and their mother. Yeah. Right. And this is the on-flow effect is move fast forward to their 20s or their 30s, 40s, even 50s, mm. they're like experiencing the the result of their challenges as a child in their later years. 100%. Mm. So my father growing up, 
I remember he was angry. He drank a lot. He was violent. He would not beat us. Yes. But the earliest memory I have of my father and brother was my father hitting my, my brother so hard. I remember the sound yeah. from 20, 25 years ago, 26 years ago of his head hitting the wall. Uh -huh. He would stumble around drunk. He would not pick us up because he was so wasted. He would gamble. He would drink. He might listen to this. I've yes. talked about him before and uh -huh. he'd get really upset at me for sharing that. Mm. I told myself I wouldn't do that growing up. Yes. I told myself I would be sober, I would be healthy. Did exactly the same. Uh -huh. Gambling, depression, anxiety. And one thing I got from my father was this big victim mentality, which has taken me 10 years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to uh -huh. overcome. And there are a lot of men listening to this who don't know they have a father issue. They don't know they have a father wound. So I'd love to hear about your story with mm -hmm. your father yes. and how that's impacted your journey. Mm -hmm. And then also how men can actually identify these things. Because the ego, the ego says, no, nah, I don't have a fucking father issue. I'm all yeah. good. Yeah. Whereas you've seen through your work that most of them do, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit more about your childhood and how that's impacted the work. I think it's, it doesn't matter whether it's big trauma or little trauma. Mm. Like trauma is trauma. And I was chatting to my wife about it this morning, that the difference between titration and trauma, mm -hmm. right? Trauma is too much, too soon, too fast. Titration is a little bit at a time, mm. right? So they're on opposite ends of the spectrum. And I guess titration really is healing. But regardless of whether it's small trauma or big trauma, it impacts your life and it influences the way that we respond in the world. So whatever you experienced as a child will impact you, whether it was something small, maybe you didn't get picked as a kid for a site, right? Or maybe you played your heart out and your dad didn't really, I guess, applaud you, give you a pat on the back that you were looking for. Or maybe he like had a high standard for you and that is something that you carried into your later years, right? Nothing was ever enough, mm. right? Strive, 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 strive. Doesn't matter how much you achieve, right? The goalpost continually or continuously always moves. So maybe you lack the ability to have gratitude. Maybe you lack the ability to be present. Maybe the relationship is never enough. You're struggling in a relationship and because nothing is ever enough, right? You struggle to be present with her doesn't matter how much you achieve. She's the most phenomenal person in the world, the, the, the woman of your dreams. But because nothing's ever enough for you, you can't be there in that relationship. Mm. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. I think the reason why I'm able to relate with such a broad spectrum of people is because I've had the full spectrum from the deepest of trauma to the little things. And I guess being a Polynesian kid, a Tongan kid growing up in a predominantly white community in the 80s mm. and the 90s, there was very few people that looked like me. So racism was extremely normal, right? So not being able to see anyone that looked like me, that moved like me, that looked like my family, that lived like my family, that spoke the same language as us. I remember my next door neighbor saying that, my brothers and I had to get sent home from school when we were in primary school because we didn't speak English. Don't come back until you can speak English. Now, English is the only language we speak. Mm. Part of that trauma is, is not being able to speak our own native tongue now. Yeah. Trying to relearn that is difficult. Yeah. Then we go to the deeper trauma, I guess, for those that have ever, and I shared it at your last retreat, was for those that have ever watched Once Were Warriors, right? When I first saw that movie, I thought to myself, that's my family. That's my childhood. That's my father. Why would I ever go to New Zealand? Which is interesting because I'm going to Auckland next weekend for a couple's you know, workshop. Yeah. And I've been over there to work multiple times now. And I've realized it's an extremely beautiful country. But when I was growing up, when I saw that movie, that's what my childhood was like. Mm -hmm. My father was just like Jake the Mutt, right? And the relationship between him and my mother was very, very similar. So I thought to myself, why would I ever go to New Zealand, mm -hmm. right? What I learned was that Outside of my home that I grew up with, because I actually grew up with two families. There was our Tongan family that I grew up with and there was two housing commission houses. It was my family, our Tongan family, and this housing commission house and next door neighbors were this Australian family. Mm. They were in a housing commission house too. But when I jumped that fence, it was a completely different world. And I was like, oh, okay. I kind of liken it a little bit to like rich dad, poor dad. Mm. He had his rich dad, he had his poor dad. I had my violent home over here. And when I jumped the fence, it was all like all sunshine and rainbows. Mm. It was like love over there. I'm like, okay. It broadened my perspective that the house that I grew up in wasn't my whole reality. That was just the reality that I was living in. And the rest of the world isn't like my home. I'm like, okay. 
So it opened up my perspective, my curiosity of what else is out there. Yeah, Does, Abs- it makes yeah. total sense. So you go from this like Jake the Must style family to yeah. experiencing something different. Uh-huh. You've clearly done a lot of work on yourself. Yeah. You know, our clients have, your clients have, my clients have, I have. There are a lot of men who listen to this who don't realize they have childhood trauma. They don't realize that the reason they're working so fucking hard yeah. and sacrificing their family and their health and their freedom mm. for their family yes. is because of their childhood. They don't realize that they don't feel like they're enough. They don't realize that the reason they yell after a long day or blow up like a ticking time bomb or their family is walking on eggshells is because of the shit from the past. Uh-huh. As men, we're not taught how to address the past. Mm-hmm. We're taught how to just sedate and numb and work, even work as a form of sedation. So you're very aware. Yes. How does a man who's listening to this, who knows he has problems in his health, wealth relationships, identify where that trauma comes from? How do you know you have it? How do you know where it comes from? How do you know to work through it and grow through it to reach that next level of your life? Mm -hmm. My recommendation is just to not be ignorant. Yeah. Right? I don't think the purpose of life is to dig, 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 to dig into all of your traumas, to unpack them and to overcome every trauma you've ever been through. Mm. You'll never get there, right? You could spend days, weeks, months, you spend so much of your life trying to overcome those traumas, you'll miss out on the presence of living. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what I, so I guess, what's the, like, what do we do there? I recommend just don't be ignorant. Right. Today's problems are here. And if anything that comes up, deal with it in that moment. Or if not, find yourself a time when you can allocate some time to actually invest in overcoming whatever you're struggling with. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, it just becomes this extremely long journey that you never really overcome. And a lot of people can find themselves in this healing journey that becomes a loop. Right. You become attached to the workshops, the healing, the growth, the cathartic Mm. releases, never really healing anything. Yeah. So I recommend that if it's big stuff, allocate the time for it. If it's stuff that's happening on a daily basis, deal with it on that day to the best that you can because tomorrow has its own sets of problems. Yeah. Ignoring and avoiding it on that day doesn't mean it goes away. It just means you you still got to deal with it the next time it comes up and the next time it comes up and the next time it comes up. And every time we avoid it, we build a new belief system, right, around it. Generally a negative belief system or a limiting belief system. Usually I can't overcome this problem, Yeah. right, because you're avoiding it. Yeah. It's no surprise that you can't avoid this thing. So my suggestion is just at the very least don't be ignorant and having the courage to lean in get the support that you need. And how you identify it is, is that as humans, we will build whole, complete, and perfect as can be. Mm. The question is what happens? Life happens, yeah, right? And as life happens, things going to happen and there's gonna create some wear and tear. And as we're supposed to, I always relate it to, you know, messages get sent, you know, so that uh, I can do things. Maybe I wanna have this drink of water, right? Mm. My body can do that efficiently. But let's say I'm experiencing a bit of a a breakdown, right? I might be hungry, I might be thirsty, but my ability to respond and listen to that message might become inhibited. If I'm experiencing big trauma, it's going to be severely right impacted, Mm -hmm. right? My ability to function in my relationship and my work, you might find yourself like road raging, right? I, I relate it to your ability to function efficiently. Yeah. Anything that impacts your ability to function efficiently is something to look at. Yeah. This is your body. This is your life saying to you, hey, pay attention to me over here. You might be experiencing burnout. Maybe you've been having too many. Maybe you're a caffeine junkie. Yeah. Maybe you love like how many you enjoy. I stopped. I stopped. Right? I've yeah. been off four weeks after 10 years. Right. Absolute fucking junkie. So even that yeah. your awareness to that. Yeah. Why did you decide to pull back on caffeine? Great question. Because I felt like it was causing dysfunction in my life. You answer that so well. I was constantly stressed. I was wired. My wife started telling me I don't enjoy being around you when you yeah. drink coffee. Yeah. You're just too intense. Uh-huh. I was reliant on it. Yeah. And I teach men how to become powerful and not rely on alcohol, drugs, porn, gambling, yeah. work to be happy. And I'm fucking chugging three long blacks before 7 right. a.m. Yeah. So there was this dysfunction 
and through reflection and journaling, I'm like, huh, my relationship's great. Business is pretty good. Yeah. What's the next mountain I get to climb? And it was just simply stopping caffeine. I'll it, tell you a quick story about this before we come back to that. So how did I quit caffeine? I had this story in my head that if I stop drinking coffee, how can I live without it? Things are going to be harder. I won't have any energy. Uh -huh. I listened to this book called The Easy Way to Quit Caffeine. Same guy who wrote The Easy Way to Quit Smoking, Alan Carr. Uh -huh. It's a two and a half hour book, audio book. I'm listening to the whole thing. He literally just tells you every belief you have around coffee. So you think it will give you energy. It doesn't. You think it tastes great. It doesn't. Here's why. You think it's good for you. It's not. Here's why. So he takes all the beliefs that prevent you from changing your behavior, tells you why they're bullshit, and then you finish the book and you go, yeah, I don't need coffee. And it, it made me realize how uh -huh. powerful the mind is, same with this trauma stuff, mm -hmm. is everything is just simply beliefs. Uh -huh. And if you believe that that road rage is gonna piss you off or that you have to work a lot or that your wife is triggering you and you truly believe that mm -hmm. without questioning it, then that's your reality. That's the frame you see the world uh -huh. in, right? Right. So it's so fucking crazy because I teach this. Yes. And for 10 years, I'm drinking this thing, thinking these thoughts. It reminded me how powerful the mind is. If you can change the stories, you can tra change your life. Now with this trauma stuff though, uh -huh. there's a lot of stuff that's not just stories, it's emotionally charged, right? Uh -huh. So it sounds like based on your answer, trauma, how do you know you have it? You look for dysfunction in your life. Marriage not working, there's probably something there. Arguments, probably something there. Stressed out, probably something there. Mm -hmm. Let's say you haven't done any work on yourself, you haven't overdone it. Mm -hmm. What's the most effective way you can start addressing this shit? Like, let's say you got dysfunction in your life. How do you start now fixing or working on that dysfunction? What, what would you I do? would start with simplicity. Yeah. Start with the basic fundamentals, mm. right? I would start with how are you sleeping? Yeah. Right? Are you moving your body? How are you eating? Are you hydrated? Mm. Uh, what are your relationships like? Mm. Right? I would start with with those really, really basic things as your morning daily rituals. Because yep. if we can't get the small things right, the big things will never matter. Yeah. Right. And in my line of work, I've noticed that a lot of the time people go for the bigger things first, right? Only to find themselves avoid the smaller things, mm. to relapse and find themselves back overcoming the bigger things. Yeah. The little things matter because they support the big things. Yeah. So if we can get the little things right on the way that you move, you eat, you sleep, you walk, you talk, these little things right, what you'll find is that the big things aren't as heavy. Yeah. And you also have the capacity to actually address them. Yes. If we don't get the little things right, the big things feel extremely heavy and it's to no surprise that people become extremely avoided. Yeah. Right? Because they're already in overwhelm. Mm. Right? Caffeinated, caffeinated, exhausted, lacking energy, tired, dehydrated, right? Undernourished, right? It's to no surprise that everyone's feeling like they're overwhelmed and they're stretched. Well, let's just get these few little things right enough to be able to buy you some breathing room yeah and it's like okay now let's have a look at originally we thought we need to do attack it this way mm. but it's, you know what we can actually dial it back a little bit mm. and i guess this is where titration really starts to come in yeah right it's like okay cool we're going to do a little bit of this and then we'll reassess it okay cool we're going to move in this direction now yeah right what do you mean by titration release titration uh, a bit of release when yep. i said titration like we can approach the problem like we were like for instance this afternoon well tomorrow i've got a one-on-one -on -one session with one of my guys who did a immersion session with me a couple of weeks ago yeah what i shared with him is he said when can we do another one-on-one -on -one breathwork session i said you know what brother i don't think the intention is for us to do the exact same thing that we did before mm. so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go out into nature mm. right instead of going back into his apartment where we're going deep into it mm. what i think would be more effective is if we stepped out to nature and allow mother nature to support us a little bit more mm. to help loosen the grip and what that might mean is is how deep he has to go might not be as deep yeah does it does that make it makes sense? total sense the, the thing i run into with a lot of successful men they're listening to this and going this sounds great like yeah. i've got dysfunction i probably have some trauma i'm stressed i'm triggered i need to work on it and then what they'll tend to do uh -huh. is they'll go, wait a minute, go into nature, breath work, little things, eat well and exercise. And the excuse then becomes, well, I don't have time for that. I'm busy. I've yet to meet a man uh -huh. who gets up early, goes to the gym every day 
does some breathing exercises, journals his thoughts and feelings every day, seven days in a week, uh -huh. who isn't winning? You yes. know, I've yet to meet a man who yeah. does those things, who doesn't have a great marriage, who's not communicating well, mm. because when you commit to those little steps, you build that capacity you talked about, your capacity uh -huh. for stress, for triggers, for overwhelm, uh -huh. it's water off a duck's back. Yeah. The problem it seems is that a lot of men avoid, right? Yes. So there's the pain of doing the basics. Uh -huh. Everyone knows they should eat well and exercise. I guess then it's the, the pain of avoiding the, it. It's the inconvenience. It's the inconvenience, it's, but this is the point. The inconvenience right. later on uh -huh. is divorce, a broken family. 100%. Your, your child's 18, 85% of your life is gone with them. We're gonna get into you as yes, a father. Yeah. And you're like, fuck. So you can never get that time back. So you and I work with a lot of men who have trauma, have dysfunction, and then they also have excuses uh -huh. and they have avoidance mm -hmm. and they don't do the basics. How does a man listening to this go, fuck, I am busy, I am stressed, and commit to doing something about it? If we strip this right back, right, your body was designed to function and work perfectly. Yeah. The brain is phenomenal. You, you talked about it before, about how powerful your mindset is. Yeah. What happens? <laughs> life what, happens. What, what happens? Yeah, Kids, happens. business, stress. So the yeah. question is, is like, what do we do there? Yeah. Right? Is it more coffee? No, right. But we push is, through. We right. do have more. Is, is is it more therapy? Is it more meds? Is it more prescription? Is it more, it's more, like more. like more, more, more? Yeah. It's just like, is that the answer? And my answer to that question is, I don't think so. Mm. I was finding like I I work online as well, and that I was behind the desk for days and for hours, and I was starting to feel a bit of irritation, and I thought to myself, I think I actually just need to get outside and put my feet on the earth. Mm. So I just walked outside. I said, I'll be back, babe. Grabbed my keys, walked out the door, and I actually just walked up and down my street where the grass was, barefoot. And I noticed that the longer that I did it, the better that I felt. I got sick of walking on those grass, so I went to the back and I walked up and down the canal, right, feet in the water, and I noticed that that negative ion exchange between live water yeah. right and the human body started to happen and i started to feel better as well mm -hmm. the smell of the salt it started to make me feel better and i'm like you know here we are as men working our asses off building our empires right and these little basic simple things are so easy to do but so easy to forget as well yeah what i noticed was is that i've been finding a lot of digestion problems lately right yeah. I'm eating, but because I was spending so much time working, I'd eat and I'd sit, I'd eat and I'd sit, right? Wasn't getting the movement in. And we can't compare one hour of training in the day to the incidental exercise that happens across the day, Yeah. right? Even if you've got your 10 or 10,000 steps in the morning, right? The rest of the day, if you're behind the desk or if you're sitting driving a car, right? You can't compare that one hour of training then 12,000 steps in the morning to the rest of your day of doing nothing, mm. right? The body was designed to move, get it moving. And that's what I realized in that afternoon. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I need to make an adjustment, mm. right? My, my, my coaching calls will go for X amount of time. I will eat at this time, but I'll get my butt outside of my apartment and out onto the earth like once or twice a day. Perfect. Right? Yeah. My digestive system changed, adjusted within 24 hours. Yeah, but you were able to identify the dysfunction That's and you right. had the awareness. Yeah, That's right. And most men in this day and age, they lack that emotional awareness. Yeah. So for a man whose digestion's fucked, maybe he's gassy or yeah. has the runs or he's blocked up, yeah. They don't realize that's a problem. Yeah. They are constantly arguing with their wife. They don't realize that's a problem. They know it's a problem somewhere in there, uh -huh. but it just gets kicked down the road. They can't. They know they should eat well and exercise. Yeah. They look down at their gut and they can't see their penis anymore. That's right. like they literally, and then they think this is a problem, but they don't do anything. You've got this level of emotional intelligence. I have it, our clients have it. A lot of men don't have it. Uh -huh. So to any man listening to this right now, if this is landing, if you have dysfunction, if you have problems in your health, wealth, relationships, there's the pain uh -huh. or the inconvenience you talked about of fixing it now. Uh -huh. But the pain of not fixing it, the later pain is far greater. Right. Which is where I want to talk about relationships. Yeah, yeah sure. Because <laughs> you, you, you've dealt with your dysfunction. You've given us some tools. You have an amazing marriage from what I've seen. Yes. I don't see behind the scenes. Yeah. My marriage is the best part of my life uh -huh. by far. 
How do you reconnect with your wife when you're going through these dysfunctions and they're fucking up your marriage? You're arguing, you're not having sex, you're like two ships passing in the night. Uh-huh. That's normal. Yeah. Like Rosie and I talked yesterday about our relationship's not normal. Yes. Most people don't connect like we do. Talk to me about your relationship. Talk to me about your marriage. Talk to me about how to reconnect with your wife. You know, it's interesting you say that because this year has been the hardest year in my marriage. Okay. Tell right? me. And the reason why it's been the hardest year in my marriage because what you're talking about is normal is my normal. Yeah. Right? So one of the challenges between my wife and I has been that I'm in this work, but that was my choice. Right? She's not in this work as much as she's part of our business and she supports it, right? Like I have a desire and a passion to do what I do and I love what I do and everything that's involved with it, right? The mind, the body, health, right? The way that humans behave, all of this stuff, right? It really intrigues me. However, that's not the way that my my wife functions and operates and I didn't really care about it until I started to notice a couple of years ago about how it was starting to cause problems. Mm. My desire is not to be with my wife so that she can be just like me. I married her because she's her, right? But what I started to identify was that if we don't do our own work, eventually what it does, it creates a growth gap and it became really apparent in my marriage about three years ago. Well, it became apparent and it's become really apparent over this last this year, specifically this year. The first time that it happened was in February and something was going on and I just said to my wife, babe, is everything okay? She's like doing the dishes. She's doing, she does this thing where she cleans. At least she does, at least she does the dishes. She cleans cleans quietly (laughs) to occupy herself and she will just bypass the emotion. Yeah. And we know when someone, there's something up. It's the tone. Yeah, I'm fine. Right. It's the energy that's behind it. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, man. This is what we've actually been battling over the last three years. And I'm thinking to myself, how are we still battling with this thing three years on? It got so bad that week. I lost five kilos that week. It stressed me out that much. Mm. And then I ended up with a back injury the week after, Mm -hmm. right? Slipped a disc and I was just like, okay, this is, we can't carry on like this. So we overcame that and that was phenomenal. That was great. Then we had another hiccup a couple weeks ago and the same sort of thing sort of popped up Mm. right similar but the challenge was is right now my wife's pregnant yeah hormonal right yeah so it went from like love making to not really love making yeah right and at first i didn't really say anything but it kind of just kept on going and i thought to myself if i don't say something i don't know if she will so I was like, okay, I was getting ready for the gym and I said, babe, do you mind if we have a chat? And then she goes, yeah, I I know we need to have a chat too. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so we have this chat. And I think to myself, if I didn't say anything, would you have said anything? She said, well, yeah. And I said, well, the truth is no, mm. because you, you've you known about this for how long? She's like, I don't know. I said, this has been going on for about a month. You haven't said this for about a month, mm. right? If I didn't say anything, I don't think you would have said anything for six months, Mm -hmm. right? You would have let that growth gap happen because you're so conditioned to letting me speak first. Because you're the leader, right? Yeah. And then you do that in all the other areas of your life, in business and Exactly, right. So I've been sitting over here just accepting that you're tired because you're pregnant, Yeah. right? But how long does that kind of go for Mm. before we can even have a conversation? It's not even about sex it's not even about making love it's about the honesty Mm. our ability to be able to have this conversation that's what this is really about so having that difficult conversation what i would say is having the courage to have that conversation yeah it created breakdown because this has been an ongoing problem i'm the first one to make the move i'm the first person to make the decision i lead absolutely everything I think maybe the men that are listening to this can relate is that that becomes extremely challenging for us because we're always making every single decision, Mm. right? It's important for us as men to be able to create the space for our women to be able to speak and step up and take up some space. Relationships are an art, right? So I literally said to my wife two mornings ago, I said, you know what, babe? Thank you. Thank you for making the conscious effort for our love, Mm. right? She makes moves for me when I go to when at bedtime, when we're about to go to sleep, when our kids are asleep. I'm already asleep. <laughs> but she made the conscious effort 
right, to come and see me in the morning. Yeah. Right. And I was grateful because that was two efforts within the same week. And I'm like, you know, she's in our second trip, in her, just started her second trimester now. Yeah. Right. But that makes a man want to give more. Yeah. You don't have to make every single effort. But I, I said to her, it's like, it's one out of a hundred for you. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, the ratio is so out of balance. Mm. I'm not talking about 50-50 and I don't think any man is talking about 50-50, right? It's just one effort, one little conscious effort towards a man will allow us, man, we can work forever. Yeah. Right? I will go for the next 100 days. Yeah. Just off that one effort. Yeah. So yeah, I hope absolutely. that, I hope no, that kind of answers answer. your question. There's so much to unpack here because I only see what I see from the outside. Yeah. So I see you smiling and laughing together when yeah. we interact. Yes. And I think amazing relationship. Yeah. And it goes to show how all of us have our own personal battles behind the scenes. Yeah. There's so much to unpack here. Rosie and I had a similar experience in Hawaii. It was our first holiday in five years because I am the listener. Yeah. You guys listening right now, I'm working a lot, building a team, stress, balance, family. First holiday in five years. And normally when we go on holiday, well, when we used to, lots of sex. Yes. Right? We have a child now. My parents were there. Not in the room, right? right? <laughs> but we're three days in and we haven't had sex. And I started getting really frustrated and angry at my wife. And in the past, I wouldn't have shared that with her. So I knew that if I brought it up, it would upset her. Uh -huh. And we find some alone time. And I say, look, there's just something I want to share with you. And she goes, what is it? She yeah. knows. She knows. So I explained to her that I wasn't feeling intimate. I wasn't feeling like she was putting in any effort. And that, that conversation created a collision. It created uh -huh. a disconnection in our marriage. It created pain. Uh -huh. She got triggered. In the past, I would have got triggered too. I wouldn't have shared it. I would have let it bottle up. And then I would have given the feedback by being angry or upset. That's not what happened. Uh -huh. So I sat with her in that trigger. I sat with her in that pain. And she was upset and she was triggered at me and she actually ended up apologizing. And since then, and that was like two months ago, she's putting in the same amount of effort. Mm -hmm. And it might be once a week. Most men, once a week sex, perfect. Uh -huh. These are the dysfunctions we have in our relationships. We're not having sex enough. Uh -huh. Our partner, like your partner, either won't share what's going on for her or she'll nag. Uh -huh. A lot of partners do that, right? Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll share by nagging. As men, we feel like our partner doesn't appreciate or respect us. Our partner doesn't feel understood. She loses her identity. Uh -huh. These are all the different dysfunctions that can happen and will happen in your marriage. Uh -huh. Hey, Legend, just really quickly, if you're watching this podcast episode and you'd like to work on your relationship, have more sex, have more intimacy, or if you just want to have a better marriage, that's exactly what we help men with at The Empowered Man. We've helped over 5,000 fathers fix their marriages, reconnect with their children, and find work-life balance. So if you want to be successful in your health, in yourself, in your relationships, and your wealth all at the same time, then we'd love to support you. If you go to the first link in the description, there'll be a button or a link you can click that will take you to book a coaching session with our Empowered Man team. Just fill out a quick quiz. If you qualify, we'll build out your custom Empowered Man roadmap for free. And then from there, you'll either want to work with us or you'll get a bunch of free content at no charge. So if you want to help with your marriage, reconnecting with your children, and work-life balance, Go to the first link down below and book a coaching session with the Empowered Man team. How do you feel like a man can build awareness to not just identify these dysfunctions, but have the emotional maturity mm -hmm. and courage to bring them up, even though it might cause an argument? Like, how do you do that? <laughs> if we take one step back about the daily rituals, yeah. about taking care of the fundamentals, that also supports the capacity to have these courageous conversations. Yeah, right. This is scary for most guys. I didn't want to have that conversation. Yeah, right. But you know, we weren't built, wired, or designed the same, mm. men and women, right? And this one thing I shared with her was like, I'm 40 at the moment, right? And I said to her, I'm like, babe, I'm still young, and for this is a high performing man podcast, right? Yeah, and like. When I, I went running with my boy Frankie in uh, in Nambucca Heads, and he's six foot four, he probably about a buck ten, buck twenty, maybe, ex NRL player, right? And he's running in front of me, and I'm looking at him thinking, this guy's like a Porsche. I don't know how he's currently playing country football, right? But he's he's retired from professional you know football, and I thought to myself. I don't know how his wife keeps him away from football because like he was built to perform. 
Mm. And I said to my wife, I'm like, babe, I'm still young. I've got a lot of energy, right? I'm like a Ferrari, yeah, right? If you keep these parks in the garage long enough, it'll eventually become stagnant. What a great right? frame. Right. And Instead I'm of just you're not like, giving me enough yeah, sex, I, this yeah, is not good enough, you don't appreciate yeah. me. You use the story and a metaphor. Most, How did you take most, that? most men are like this as yeah. well, right? Like we don't go through what women go through. So the question is like, what do we do here? We have to have the courage to be able to have these conversations. And if you're not taking care of the, the fundamentals, your ability to have these conversations becomes extremely compromised, mm -hmm. right? Also, the place that you speak from may not be coming from the heart either. The, the tone and the context, the place that it comes from, is going to come from a place of anger, mm -hmm. right? Because you're pissed, you're frustrated, and it's going to come out sounding and feeling like that. Now, just because you're experiencing anger doesn't mean that's the way it needs to feel when your partner receives it. Yeah. Right? If you are taking care of yourself and the fundamentals and you're expressing yourself with your support network, when it comes to speaking to your partner, you're being able to speak from the filtered version now. Yeah. The, not the raw version. Our partners were not designed to receive the raw version. It's too sharp, it's too heavy, it's too blunt, right? It's too abrasive. Mm. So making sure that you have your support network, your best mate, your mentor, your coach, to be able to filter what you need to express through that. So when you do go back to speak to your partner, not only do you have a filtered version to speak to her with, but you also have the tools, the awareness to be able to navigate your way through that conversation as well. Absolutely, and that's what yeah. most men lack. Right. Like what you just shared is the formula, but for a man to know what the tools are, to be in a great routine, that's the first thing we teach our clients. Yeah. Some of them make $100 million a year. Yeah. Get in a fucking good routine. Yeah. How do I do that? How to communicate, how to have a coach. Most men don't have coaches. Right. They spend more time and money on their fucking phone or their car, uh -huh. but God forbid they invest in themselves. Uh -huh. So what you talk about sounds so simple, but most men lack it. Taking it a step further with this idea of communication, it does take courage, but it also takes repetition, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Because you're not going to be good at something the first time around. Right. What I found is a lot of men will listen to something like this and go, you know what? I feel like I'm not getting enough sex. Maybe I'm not appreciated. Maybe I'm not respected. They'll hear these words uh -huh. and then they'll go to their partner and say, you're wrong. Yeah. This is what I'm not getting. This is what you're wrong. Instead of first looking within and realizing that relationships are a mirror. That, that's the first filter, right? Yeah. Right? What you said before, that's the raw version. Exactly. Where you're projecting now. Yeah. Now, I, I was talking to my brother yesterday, recently proposed to his wife, uh, his girlfriend, mm. right? And he said to me, so I'd organized a venue for him, right? And I was like, look, I'm grateful that I'm able to do this for you. And then he said, um, called me back later asking how many people can we have? And I said, how many people are you thinking? He says, I've got 160 on my list as is. And I said, so that's not including hers. You're thinking what, like 300 people? I said, have you thought this through? Who's actually running this wedding? He said, I am. And I said, if you're the one who's in the wedding getting married, you're also the one running the wedding too? I said, look, put it this way. When you run a project, you know what a project manager is, right? And he yeah. said, yeah, I'm a project manager. I said, okay, perfect. Take you out of the equation. Do your boys know what to do? He goes, I understand. Yeah. We all need someone to lean on that needs to support, yeah. right? That we can soundboard off, yeah. right? Otherwise you're delivering that projection, that raw version. And the truth is that's also the person that you love. Mm. Is that really the way you want to talk to them? Is that really the way that you want them to experience you yeah. as well? Right, women were. You think about the physical build of a woman, right? Their femininity, their bone density, their muscle mass, right? Their physical bodies were not designed to feel the weight of what a man goes through. And you think yeah. about the stresses of what men go through, yeah. right? We will carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. That's why we were bought, built the way that we are, yeah. right? It doesn't mean that that's what we have to put onto our partners. Yes, they weren't designed to do that. So the question becomes, what do we do? We lean on the brotherhood. We lean on the community. We lean on our coaches, our mentors. Like, excuse my French. Fuck, you're paying them. Yeah. Use them. But start paying them if you're not paying yes. them. You know what I mean? Right. If you're listening to this, yeah. guy, this makes so much sense. Get right. a fucking coach. That's it. Exactly, yeah. right? It's like 
the return on that investment. Yeah. I was thinking to myself when I was going through the most recent struggle about how much I, I could feel the weight of what I was carrying, mm. right? Not the stress of my relationship, the weight of my world, Yeah. right? The business, the community, all of that. And I was like, why does this feel so heavy? And what I realized was it simply takes a breakdown in our relationships to make us realize how much we're actually carrying. And then I felt my, my health deteriorate because Everything. of it. And I was like, okay, I need to be able to process this and then be able to communicate this and articulate my way myself in a way with my wife that she can understand what's going on here. Yes. Right, because my immune system started crumbling, yep. and I was like, "Whoa, I'm holding this, 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 this," and I was like, "Okay, this is what the world of a man goes through, right? We carry the weight of the world, and if our relationship isn't solid, that whole world can come crumbling on down." Yeah, right. So it's like take care of these fundamentals because that's going to support you in your relationship. That's going to support your own nervous system and everything that you, this empire that you're building, this life that you're building, mm. it gets to continue to grow and thrive. And when it goes through its ebbs and flows, you can weather the storms. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you, you run retreats, the empowered yes. man retreats. I run the empowered man movement. Uh -huh. the, the version of an empowered man is a man who has mastery to some degree uh -huh. And control, not control like a control freak, mm. control as in you choose and you design your life in three key areas. You have health, wealth, and relationships. Uh -huh. Now, what a lot of men forget is that your health, wealth, relationships are all interlocked. 100%. So you can have a lot of wealth, but if you get cancer or your yeah. wife cheats on you, yes. you're fucked. Yeah. Or you can have an amazing marriage, but yes. if you can't provide for your family, yeah. Yeah. what can you do in terms of safety and security? You touched on on communicating with your partner and sharing what's going on for you. A lot of men struggle to do that because they struggle to control their emotions, uh -huh. right? So if you think about it, almost every man experiences anger. Uh -huh. We experience fear, doubt, guilt, and shame. Uh -huh. One of the most powerful tools in my life has been learning, you mentioned tools, on how to express anger to my wife without explosion. Because uh -huh. what we tend to do with emotions as men, we're not taught this shit, we suppress the emotions and then they explode. Uh -huh. What I mean by expressing is being able to say to Rosie when I was upset about the sex or lack thereof, uh -huh. I talk to her calmly and I say, you know what? I, I know this is gonna upset you. I'm just feeling quite angry right now. Now, do I sound angry? No. Not at all. So I'm telling her that I, that I feel angry. She's understanding, because we want that as men, understanding that I feel angry but she's not feeling the anger from me. That's the filter you talk about. Uh -huh. If you're a man listening to this right now and you feel anger, you feel stressed, you feel guilty, you feel ashamed, you feel tired, you've got to learn. You don't need to do anything. You get to learn mm. how to filter that for yourself so you can filter it for others. Well, you get to dissolve the emotional charge. That's exactly. To it, right? and but not I'm, ignore it. No, not, yeah. not, not ignore it, right? Yeah. The consequences of not dissolving that emotional charge that's attached to what you're experiencing, huge. right, is huge because it creates an unsafe environment for your partner. Yeah. If they feel the full wrath, and brothers, listen to me when I say this, if your partners, if your women, if your children feel the full wrath of your anger, how do you think that will impact them? Do you think that they will feel safe? And if they experience feeling unsafe, how will they feel in the future? And if this behavior becomes the norm, now we're talking about trauma. Yeah. Too much, too soon, too fast, right? And if this becomes an experience that becomes repetitive, now you're laying down conditioning, right? You're instilling new programming right now that this is what being a man is. Yeah. Right? My physiology is like buzzing at the moment because I'm like, because now like this is leaning into what the world's being able to experience as toxic masculinity. It's yeah. like, no, what we're really talking about is dysregulated wounded boys. It's not, masculinity is not toxic. No, That's not, a fucking no. fallacy. What we're really talking about is boys that are in men's bodies, which is, brings me back to the beginning of the, the podcast around the role of the father. Yeah. In the old days, what we had was we had boys, we had teenagers, we had young men that were in the adolescence, we had adults, we had the middle-aged men, we had the fathers, the uncles, the grandparents, we had the elders. We had a full spectrum of life, of what it means to be a man from from birth to death. Mm. And we shared life like this way, right? In today's world, 
most men aren't exposed to that full spectrum. Most men barely have a relationship with their fathers. Yeah. Right? If the example of the role model isn't there, then how will you know? Yeah, and taking that a step further, most men, yeah. their brothers, yeah. friends, drink every weekend, yeah. complain, bitch about their wives. Uh -huh. So we lack this tribal environment with our grandfathers, fathers, brothers. Yeah. But then also our friend group, they don't lift us up. Yeah. The rising tide raises all the ships, which yeah. is why it's so important mm. to have a coach, to have a brotherhood, 100%. to have a tribe. That yeah. is in our DNA as men. Yeah. Yeah. And that creates that capacity and all those things. But back in like the village days, that's what would happen. The father isn't the only person that raised the son. Mm. His brother did. The uncles did. Right? His father did. And they were right? aligned as well. That's they right. The same values. Yeah. Yeah. Beliefs. Right. So yeah. the father would know, he'd have the awareness to know it was time for his son to go spend time with his brother or his father, mm. right? Or the neighbor. Right, with the other kids, the older kids, because that helped shape his son to becoming the man that he needed to be. Absolutely. Not just the father by himself. Yeah. And maybe that's where a lot of fathers feel that it's all up to me. Now, I'm not saying being reckless and go and put your son with any man, right? Vet these people that you introduce into your children's lives, right? What are the characters that you want your child to, to be exposed to? Mm. right to experience provide that environment right and whatever your son you know uh takes to whatever they are drawn to it'll stand out whatever they don't like that'll stand out too yeah makes yeah. total sense hey legend just really quickly if you're getting value from this podcast episode please do me a massive favor this content's free and it helps change lives that's why you're listening give it a thumbs up if you're watching on youtube or give it five stars on podcast platforms it helps us reach more men and ultimately keep more families together. So please help out, give it five stars, give it a thumbs up. I hope you get value. All of what you've shared so far comes back to one core principle and that's work on the man. Work on the man in the mirror. You shared something so powerful with me a few weeks ago. We've talked about communicating with your wife, having the courage, having a coach, having a tribe. One thing we haven't touched on is childhood and being a father. You told me a few weeks ago that you chose 18 years ago, your daughter's here filming with yeah. us, to be a dad before business. Uh -huh. I've spent the last three years of my life grinding. My daughter many days will say to me, daddy, daddy, don't work. And she'll hold my hand and I'll take it out of her hand on purpose and I'll choose to work. And there are many days where I feel this immense guilt and shame because I'm building a future for my family. We have property, we have business, we have a team of 18, I'm feeding everyone. And I'm sacrificing this time with my daughter, I'll never get back. And that fucking breaks me. I've got another daughter due in December. And I'm so terrified of having that same pattern repeat. How the fuck did you make that decision? Because we live in such a busy world right now. We, we need more. I feel it. My clients feel it. The listeners feel it. I need more. I need more money. I need more success. And we know we're sacrificing time with our family. And we choose to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. How the fuck do you have both? Because you made that decision. It's possible, is I guess, I guess is what I believe. And I feel emotional yeah. saying, thinking of it myself because what I didn't want to do was lose the spirit of my child. She was this curious, free-spirited little child. And I remember her cousin was going to daycare and she was getting bullied. Not only she was getting bullied, she was like getting foot and mouth, you know, and coming home from that. And I was like... My daughter doesn't have any siblings, even though I'm one of 12. So I've got two older brothers, five younger sisters, four younger brothers. My daughter didn't have that. So how do I protect my child? I'm like, well, it's my job to raise her. I'm her parent, right? I'm like, the money doesn't matter. And I would look at her and I was thinking, I can't send this kid to a daycare, right? I can't send to a daycare and, and feel with integrity of myself. I'm like, my, and I was the first one in my family to have a child. So it wasn't like I was modeling off this anyone else other than my own experience. I'm like, I've never been to daycare, mm. right? I've only grown up with my family, with my parents and my uncles and my aunties. That's it, right? So I'm like, I'm, I'll raise her, right? I remember putting her in creche and the look on her face, mm. right? I was like, man, I can't even leave her in creche, right? Because she's confused. Why would you leave me? Right? And if you look at your kids and they look at you with that look, how can you be okay with yourself to 
for their lifetime, leave them time and time again. Now, it may be how it starts off, that you might be in FIFO, you might do night shift, you might do shift work, right? you might work a nine to five. But I think the whole goal and the light at the end of the tunnel is that's not how you live the duration of your child's childhood. Mm. Whether you know whether it's the end of primary school or high school, right? I think the goal of being a man is progression and growth and evolution, right? And if we're talking about that, then success should eventually like come into play. It should lead to be, freedom. And the yeah. whole point of success is to be able to buy yourself some more of your own time back. Yeah. Right. And as we buy that time back, the things that matter to you most is what should come in. I guess what I thought to myself was that there was enough time in the day. I will restructure my life so that I can look after her and I can make money as well. I'm not willing to compromise both, yeah. right? Ensuring that we made enough money and definitely made enough money. That was the beautiful thing about being a personal trainer, yeah. right? It, it made good money, but I wasn't willing to do it at the cost of my child. Yeah. And it makes me emotional because she's here. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. But it makes me emotional because I remember the look on her face. Yeah. Right. I dropped her off to school. I picked her up from school. There were some times where I'd finished my client. I remember running a boot camp across the road from the primary school. And it was like six o'clock, finishing the class off, thinking to myself, I've forgotten something, haven't I? Right. And I was like, oh, that's right. I left my daughter at daycare because I was covering a class. It wasn't my class. It was someone else's class, but I put that class in at a time that I would usually be with my daughter, mm. right? So constantly reminding myself that why I work, what this is all for, but I'm not willing to to compromise my child's childhood yeah. and my parenthood for the sake of money. Yeah, which no, was a decision no money, you made. No money will ever be worth that. Well, this is the thing. And we say that as men. We say family is our first value. We say we're trying to build freedom. <laughs> yeah. But our actions don't support our words, right? And maybe that's yeah. where the conscious conversation needs to be around. Exactly. And, but the reality is it's because of our stories and we believe we have to grind and we have to work hard to be successful. And that's simply not true. This is a belief I'm repatterning within myself. It's like, when is enough enough? Nine properties, <laughs> multi-million yeah. dollar business, you need more? Yeah. Or do you spend more time with your family? And you can have both. I think there are a lot of guys who are watching this. They're business owners. They're... They don't have that freedom yet. What's the point of being successful if you have no time and you lose your family? Uh -huh. So one thing I've been practicing and we're teaching our clients right now is, okay, let's say you work 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. It's a lot of fucking hours. Uh -huh. But then you schedule, prioritize, because you control it. Men think they're not in control. You schedule the time on the weekend and it's presence, no phones, no screens. Four nights a week now, bathe Talia, read to her. Doesn't matter how tired you are, how stressed you are, I make that commitment. Mm -hmm. Once a week, dad ventures, yeah. daddy daughter date nights. A lot of men will listen to this and go, I don't have the time, instead of asking, how can I create the time? Because you're right, you don't have the time. You're gonna fucking die. Mm -hmm. One day you won't be here for your family. It could happen tomorrow. Uh -huh. So this is the, the con conscious creation you talked about, that conversation, not just with your wife, but with yourself as a man. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many men listen to this right now and they're going, you know what? I don't spend enough time with my kids. I wish I could not work so much. Mm -hmm. You can create that. Yes. Yeah. I, what, what's one thing you'd say to them that would make them just go believe that? Because you and I understand I, I, that now. I, I, look, when we say I don't have enough time, well, time doesn't duplicate. You don't get more time. There's just time. Mm. The question is, where is your time going anyway? right? You got 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week. If you're working a nine to five, five days a week, right? Like what's that? 45 hours? Yeah. Something like that. 40 right? hours, yeah, yeah. That's your normal 40 hour week. Yeah. Right. Uh, and if you look at that, okay, well, yes, you are working, but there's before, there's after, there's the weekend, you've got time, mm. right? If you run your own business, well, it's up to you to organize your time and build your business in such a way that it grows to be able to buy yourself back more time. Otherwise, otherwise it's not a business. <laughs> otherwise, it's not a business. It's a prison, right? yeah. Your business model is actually broken. And if your business model is only designed to lose more time, right, all you've done is just built your, bought yourself another job, mm. right, where you're a slave to your own job. Yeah. Right. Your work, your business, right, isn't going to make love to you. <laughs> right. That's your relationship with your partner. Your work, your business, right, isn't going to give you the fulfillment. 
that your children do, right? And children only stay young for so long. My daughter's 18 right now. They're only in primary school for those first six years and then the following six years they're in high school. That's it, right? There are some of my clients that have never changed their kids' nappies. Some of my clients have never dropped their kids to school, right? What that really means is you don't have any of those memories. You have no memories of athletics, dropping off to school, picking up for school, mm. right? Um, Christmas, like fates, all of these sorts of things, all those school memories, maybe you pass them off like this is what mum does, mm. right? Then they finish school and you're sharing life with them and you're wondering why you don't have that depth of a relationship, but you've got time now. Yeah, but it's too late. It's too late. Yeah. You didn't put the groundwork in, Yeah, right? There is time. Maybe what I might say is, what is the consequence of not investing the time? Maybe that's a better question to ask. That's a phenomenal question. Yeah. And you can ask it in your marriage. Yeah. You can ask it in your health. You can ask it with those routines or those little things you talked about in the yeah. morning. The consequences are almost always higher or the cost is almost always higher always. than the return on investment of putting in the time, the money, and the energy. Yeah. I think there's two main reasons that I've identified that cause men to struggle to spend time with their family. Maybe more, but two main ones. The first one is as men, you've probably realized we are terrible at prioritization. We don't know how to prioritize. We focus on stupid shit. We mentally masturbate. We're constantly busy. You've had a long day and you got nothing done. You worked all day, uh -huh. right? So we don't know how to prioritize in work. We also don't know how to prioritize family, ourselves, our loved ones. The second is we don't know how to deal with stress. Like how many times as a man have you had a long day and you're sitting there at the table with your family and you're not there? You're there, but you're not there. Your wife's talking to you. You don't hear her. Uh -huh. Your child's laughing and giggling. You don't see him or her. We don't know how to navigate the stress. We don't know how to switch off. That's a skill set. Uh -huh. You run a seven-figure business. You've helped multiple millionaires. We both help high-performing men. I've got some strategies, but I'd love to hear your strategies for stress. And I'm mindful of time. I want to talk about the breathe room and breath work uh -huh. as well. We've got about 20 minutes. But I'd love to know more about how you help men deal with stress and how you deal with stress. Because you seem pretty fucking chill, man. I don't see behind the scenes. Yes. I'm, I'm sitting in my office, I'm like, oh, I'm fucking exploding. Do you experience stress? Yeah, look, How do you navigate it? I'm going to say yeah. two things. Like for us, like today's Friday. In our community, we got a thing called Gratitude Friday. So every yep. Friday in any of my containers, we'll, we'll express something that we're grateful for about in our lives on that day. The thing that I shared that I was grateful for today was patience, mm. awareness, and wisdom, specifically around um, my health and my marriage, mm -hmm. right? A bit of patience, awareness, and wisdom has gone a long way, mm -hmm. right? I think it's worthwhile taking the time to get things right than being in a rush only to stuff things up. Mm -hmm. How many times do you want to get a job done, but you force it to make it happen? Oh, you might have got the job done, life. but you broke it, right? It wasn't really what you wanted anyway. The outcome... You, you did produce a result, you did complete it, but the execution was woeful, right? You caused destruction, right? Just to try and get the thing done. And that's why I was grateful for patience, awareness, and wisdom today. Having the awareness to slow down and the patience to actually be okay to slow down and the wisdom from life experience of being 40 and all the experiences that I've been through to know, you know what, if I really want a different result, that I'm going to do something different, which kind of brings me back when you were talking about stress before and the expression of anger. One of the things that's helped me lately has been doing jujitsu, mm. right? I think some martial arts and something, something some kind of combat sports, um, I think is really beneficial to a lot of men. And I think the thing about jujitsu is, is that it's like a game of chess. And I remember I was doing it with my business partner. So he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, recently got it. And we were wrestling and I could have used my weight to my advantage, but I brought into my awareness, that's not going to produce the result that I'm looking for. I don't learn anything by using my weight. Mm. I'm just forcing like me to win, right? Well, how do I win next time? Do I manhandle my way through? So I'm like, okay, try to think my way through it. Actually ask some questions. Help me here, bro. 
mm-hmm. right? Help me get better. I'm learning right now, right? So jujitsu is sort of what's helped me there. Um, in terms of stress, regulation, right? If we think about nervous system, everyone knows what a nervous system is and that when our nervous system is dysregulated, we just don't really know who we are, right? And I kind of liken it to, you know, remember those Snickers ads, right? So it's like uh, when people, like they were behaving poorly, then they had a Snickers and then they were normal again. Mm. People are a little bit like that when their nervous systems are dysregulated. Yeah. When your nervous system is dysregulated, who knows who shows up? Right, you're angry, you're frustrated, and that's the person that everyone gets to experience. Yeah. So I feel to be able to buy yourself some time and actually show up and f- show up with some solutions, regulating the nervous system is the place that you want to be. So for me, it was grounding the other days. Sometimes it might be breath work, mm. right? Sometimes it might be journaling. Sometimes it might be just actually hydrating. Yeah. Right. Maybe you've been working. You like you've finished your glass of water. I've got half here. Mm. Right. I've had about a liter and a half already this morning. Right. So, have you even done the basics right? right? Yeah. And your nervous system is closely tied to all of these sorts of things. So, I'd be focusing on the nervous system first, and then seek outside that. Mm. I'd love to do some breath work right now with you. Before yeah. I do that, I want to touch on this point of slowing down and being patient. I've got patience tattooed on my body and I only just started learning it this year. I'm 33 in a week. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I didn't learn patience, stress was the leading form of the way I pushed through life. It was force. I built a lot of success on force and most of our clients are the same. Uh-huh. So there's this piece of you uh-huh. that is impatient powering through, rushing all the time, in a hurry, judgmental, high expectations. And a trap a lot of men can fall into is they build success with that. They build a million dollar business, they build a team, they build success, but there's only so far that can get you. And what I'm starting to notice is that a lot of men will take that pressure, that stress, that rush, that that angst, Uh and they'll take it into their marriage. They'll take it into their relationship with their children and it starts to destroy the other areas of their life. It sounds so simple just slowing down, Uh being patient. And I think the way you do that is you look at everything as a lesson. Yes. So every stress, every argument, every problem, every dysregulation, every challenge is ultimately just an opportunity to learn and grow. Uh The problem is when we're moving too fast, we don't see that opportunity and we look at it as a problem. So I'd love to give the the listeners an opportunity to learn and grow because they're listening right now and going, this is fucking great. Yes, you're right. I'm in a hurry. I'm stressed. I need to slow the fuck down. Then they don't do it. Yes, yes. (laughs) You have an amazing business that you're launching on top of men's medicine called The Breather Room. Yes. And I want to support it as much as I can. Uh I'm sure you'll explain in a second, but it's basically giving the world a tool Uh they can use to regulate the nervous system. Mm -hmm and be better fathers, husbands, and men, or women. Yes. Do you want to talk a bit about the Breathe Room and then maybe give us a quick, if we have the time, we've got about 15 minutes, um, tool they could practice right now. Might not be the whole thing. Yes. But a sneak peek of how they can regulate stress. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thanks and be for, present. Thanks yeah. for asking. Yeah. So the Breathe Room, so if we go back to, to men's medicine, men's medicine is this community. It's that we do a lot of deep work over here. And being in this space for all the years that, I, that I'd that i been in, started off with online coaching and it evolved into what I do now. Mm. And men's medicine, we've been doing this for about six years now. And I'm always thinking about progression, greater solutions. And the deeper stuff isn't the only way to solve a problem. Just really quickly, so the so deeper yes. stuff you mean? The deeper stuff, trauma release work. Yeah, right? shit from your childhood. Yeah, diving into childhood stuff. Yeah, okay, cool. Right, like all yeah. of that sort of anything to do with that, Yeah. right? addictions, abuse, um, trauma, all of that sort of stuff. Just breakdown, yeah. Yeah, any kind of a breakdown, that deeper stuff, that's what we do at Men's Medicine. Sure. Right, but not everyone is going through deep trauma, as we spoke about before, big and small trauma, right? And breathwork is basically like the backbone through our business. It is the common thread that's through everything that we do. Mm -hmm. And the reason that it is is because we use it as a tool to move things, 
right? There's only so far talk th therapy is going to get you. So breathwork is this tool that has the ability to bridge the gap from where you are to where you want to be. And you might be talking about something right now and then you find yourself at an edge, right, where there's that dysfunction starts to kick in and you're struggling to communicate right now. Mm. Implementing a breathwork technique at that moment will help dissolve that blockage, that barrier, and be able to shift your energy and your state to a point where we can actually start talking about this thing now yeah right with men's medicine we do this deeper stuff but i guess the question becomes what about everyone else mm. right so the thought for me back in 2021 was wouldn't it be great if breathwork was in the hands of all people if breathwork was in the hands of all people then everyone would have the skill and the tool to be able to regulate their own nervous systems so regulate their own it's nervous like systems. the most powerful thing ever yeah. yeah so i thought to myself how can we make that happen Coming from a personal trainer background, being in the fitness industry for 20 years, I thought to myself, the fitness industry would be a great place to do that because a great vehicle to do that because it's a space that society uh, understands, right? That is also acceptable by all of the community, right? And what if breathwork was just like your yoga class or your Pilates class, or your gym, your functional fitness class, that you could just book in, attend the class, and then keep moving. However, if the way that it's packaged up is in trauma release or holotropic or you know uh, any of that deeper stuff, style of breath work, it's not going to work because most fitness classes that are inside of the gym are only an hour, yeah. right? These bigger cathartic trauma release sessions, we're talking hours, mm. right? The breath weight session might go for 45 minutes to an hour, but you need like half an hour to an hour to build up to that. You need at least an hour to unpack that. And then it can carry on for days afterwards. That, that's as exactly well. yeah. right. You know, because yeah. you're talking about people's trauma. You're talking about things that people have been struggling for majority of their lives, right? I'm talking about how do we take this tool and deliver it to people to be able to access it in an hour, right? In a gym. Yeah. Right. So it's like, okay, well, what if we build a system that it can fit into the fitness industry? What if all health coaches, fitness coaches, personal trainers, nutritionists, anything to do, anyone to do with health and fitness had the skill to be able to facilitate breath work at any given time with their clients? Mm -hmm. Maybe you think back when you're doing one on one coaching or you're doing your online coaching and you're doing your coaching calls, your group calls where you feel something's going on. Mm. They're not being completely honest here, mm. right? Or the energy is a little bit stale, right? Breathwork has the ability to change that state. Breathwork has the ability to help break down that barrier, that blockage, that wall, so someone can speak more truthfully. Yeah. Think if I was the, the personal trainer talking to my client and they're not being completely honest about their nutrition plan. Mm. Yeah, I've been tracking. I've been sticking to the meal. Well, your stats say something else, mm. right? Your scale says something else. What are you not talking about? And it's like, you know what? What we're going to do is we're actually going to drop into some breath right now, mm. right? And then we'll talk after it. Now, like, okay, cool. You might guide them through one to three minutes of breath. And yeah. now let's talking. Now we've been able to change the state, dissolve that blockage, and people have a tendency to speak a little differently after a few breaths. Yeah. Maybe you're going through, that's, the first goal with the breathe room. The second goal after that is being able to put it onto a timetable. Yeah. So let's say you're going through something and you don't have time to attend an event on the weekend and this has been a challenging week. Maybe the day's been extremely hard and you've been doing this for two days. Let's say you're in construction, right? You're the builder. The trading has been extremely hard to deal with. You've done that day one. Day two, mm. it's like, man, this has been a shit fight. Tomorrow evening, there's a breathwork class. You're like, man, I'm booking in for that. Yeah, I need to decompress. I need to wind down. That might actually buy you some time to be able to maybe go and see somebody if you really need to see somebody. Or it might be just the thing to take off the edge. Yeah. Right? If you think of like we've said this multiple times of – the weight of what a man carries. Huge. Right? If you had the ability that maybe you worked with a personal trainer, you rock up to your session, you finished day at work, you, you rocked up after a full day's of work to go to your personal training session, you're overwhelmed, you're rushed, you're flustered, you're frustrated, you've been through the traffic, you're going through the session, right? You're still in this sympathetic state, fight or flight, and your, your trainer's just like, he's brought it into his awareness. It's like, bro, stop. A few breaths. Into your nose, out through your mouth. Yeah. Right. Give me two more of those. Right. And now you're like. <sighs> and it completely shifts. 
shifts you. So, so just, just now like, you can lift. Exactly. Lay down, rip it out now. Let's go. So you've got you've got these two elements you're building out. You're building out a curriculum for the entire world to it's worldwide. Yes. Yep. To have a process to follow. But then you're also empowering the regular personal trainer, health coach, anyone in health to then use those tools with the world. Yep. Now, there'll be a bunch of people that listen to this who are health coaches. And what we'll do is we'll drop a link down below for the Black Friday pre-sale. This will launch before then. Uh-huh. So if you are a fitness coach or health coach or a chiropractor or somebody in that industry who wants to have this powerful tool, we'll drop a link down below. Mm. And there's going to be a lot of people listening, though. Yes who have heard you just talk all this amazing stuff Uh and they're like, what the fuck is he talking about? Yes. Because they've never even heard of breath work or done it. Uh The reason I wanted to bring this up was to promote the the breathe room, but also to show everyone the power of this shit. We've talked about not having sex. We've talked about not being a present father, not switching off, dysregulation, dysfunction. A lot of this shit can be fixed in 30 seconds with this tool. And Uh guess what? This tool is free. That's why I love it so much. So... Do you think it might be a good idea to get the people listening to experience it? We can do it right now. Yes. It, it won't be a full session, but maybe uh-huh. we just do something really quickly. Yeah, we'll do a few Get things. them to feel feel something. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah, fantastic. Let's do it. So all I want you to do first is I'll take an inhale in through your nose. Long exhale out through your mouth. <sighs> eyes Offload, closed. Yeah, eyes closed. Right? Allows you to drop internally into yourself. Long exhale. As we breathe into your nose, allows you to tap into the parasympathetic nervous system straight away. As you elongate that exhale, you offload more CO2 and you allow yourself to sit in that parasympathetic nervous system a little bit more, which is your rest and digest. Beautiful. We'll do one more of those. Inhale into your nose. Long exhale out through your mouth. We're going to take three more of these breaths this time. When you exhale, you're going to exhale with a sigh. So you'll take an inhale into your nose. Yep. And everyone watching at home, try this alongside me, breathing in. And you exhale with a physiological sigh. (sighs) That's it. Beautiful. It'll create some sound. We'll do two more of those. (sighs) Beautiful. Last one. Take an inhale into your nose. A long exhale. Exhaling with a sigh. (sighs) This sound, what this does, it tells your body that you are in a safe place. Continue to follow your breath, this time returning back to simply nasal breathing. That's it, good. We can find yourself back to purely just nasal breathing. What we want to do is start to stretch these breaths out. And we're going to start to work our way towards LSD. Now, we're not talking about acid. What we're talking about is light, soft, deep nasal breathing, which will keep you in your parasympathetic nervous system. Now, this is a clinical technique of breath work that helps support anxiety and depression that they use at the Buteco method. The goal here is to breathe so light, so soft, so deep as if you were barely breathing at all. So light, so soft that you are barely moving the hairs in your nose. Beautiful. I also like to I also like to introduce long and slow too. So the longer, the slower, the deeper, the better, the lighter, the softer, the deeper, the better. And what you may start to notice is that you may start to be experiencing a bit of calm. When you find yourself back at that place, feel free to take a moment there to bring your awareness to some gratitude, something that you're grateful for in on this day. When you're ready after that, feel free to wriggle your fingers and toes, your hands and your feet to bring yourself back into the space. Fuck, so easy. What are we talking like? So 60, simple. 60 seconds? Yeah, it's like, it's like even being here with you, there's energy, like, I am energy. I was talking to James about it. I don't need coffee. I'm fucking energized by life, man. And Uh every man deserves that. But that can be destructive because you get so energized, you burn the fuck out. I think speed can kill. Speed can kill. And this tool, man, that you're releasing, and I use this every morning, even coming to your event. Yes. I learned how to expand my diaphragm. I've been doing this shit for years. Yes. It's free. It's fast. Instantly, I, I... get that patience, that calmness, and now I'm able to attack the day from a frame of power versus force. Uh 
Uh We force so much. And this is why our marriages break down. This is why we burn out. This is why we're not with our children. Mm -hmm. There is a world Uh where you can have power instead of force, presence instead of judgment or rush, patience. Mm -hmm. And every man deserves that. Every man does. So everything you've shared today has, has given us some tools to get there. I'm so excited for the Breathe Room, man. We're going to have to definitely do this again at yes. the Empowered Man Cave uh-huh. next month. Anything you would share, I have, a, I have a number more things we'll cover next time. So if you are watching this right now and you're getting value, uh-huh. make sure you follow the podcast. Make sure you follow Leno. His link will be down below, mm-hmm. as will the Breathe Room. But uh, what's what's the last thing you would say to a man who's or woman who's listening to this? And this has landed for them. They feel dysregulated. They know they could be better for their families. What's the number one piece of advice you'd give that person right now that they can take action on today? What's the one thing? What I'm going to say is you are the one, right? Only you can do what you do the way you do. And when you don't do that, everyone that's supposed to experience you misses out, right? So it basically means the reason why you were put on this earth doesn't get to be experienced, which means you take that to the grave, So by taking care of yourself allows you to live in your life's purpose, right? There's something in the world that only you do the way that you do it. And when you don't take care of yourself, when you don't take care of when you're not sleeping well, when you're completely dysregulated, when you're overrun, you're consuming way too many coffees, you're projecting yourself everywhere. Like that sounds hyper-aroused just even saying that, right? People aren't really truly experiencing you. Right, and I guess you can almost talk about red pill, blue pill right now. You're falling trapped to society's expectations and the normalities of the world. Mm. It's not normal at all, right? In your heart, you know what's right for you. And the thing is, is that only you can share with the world the things that you were put on this earth to do. So take care of yourselves out there, mm. right? And then go out there and share whatever that is. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Mm. Brother, I really appreciate you being here. If you are watching this at home right now, make sure you give this five stars wherever you're watching and share it around. Men's Medicine, your movement Thank you, is based on sharing. So we get to yeah. share this with the world yeah. and empower each and every one of us to look after ourselves. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Thank, Thank you. you bro.